As the summer heat ratchets up, police in Colorado Springs are being slammed with cases. Uh, how many are there, sir? Hardly noticed in the fray, a bedraggled young man wanders in, clutching a yellow notepad. He's very upset and obviously has something to tell police. Excuse me, have you been helped? No, I need to talk to a detective, please. Uh, it's about a friend of mine. I think he's in a lot of trouble. OK, one second, please. Down the hall, Lieutenant Joe Kenda is working through an obstacle to one of his cases. So now the witness isn't quite sure. I was trying to arrange a physical lineup and running into one headache after another. Great. Detective Kenda? Well, call me when you find out. I'm sorry, sir, but there's someone out there that I really think you need to see. I see head nods toward this kid in the lobby. He's been crying, and there are tear stains in the dirt in his face. He looks like a street urchin and is clutching this yellow legal pad. Whatever he has to say relates to what's on that legal pad. I just don't know what it is yet. Well, Detective Kenda, how can I help you? Uh, I I'm James. Um, this is about my friend, Lewis. Um, I have a note. What's in the note? Uh, you'll just have to read it. Want to put it down on the table for me? Right here? It's a confession to murder, followed by a suicide note. Signed, Louis Denoya. Very neatly written. And it says that he kills someone named Lenny, he alleges in self-defense to an extortion plot. It's basically saying, I did this, this is why, and I don't want to go to jail, and so I'm killing myself. Very strange indeed. I've never seen one before, never seen one since. James, how'd you come about this now? I, uh, I got it from his house, uh, but it started two days ago. James stated that Lewis had called him and told him that uh, he had killed somebody and that he was thinking of taking his own life. I uh, go to his house, and the uh, door was unlocked, so I go in. Um, the first thing that I saw was the notepad, and I read it, and um, that's when I saw the blood. Blood? Uh, there was blood on the floor. I. Uh, got freaked out and I left. Moments later, witness James Dalton is guiding Lieutenant Kenda through a neighborhood his major crimes unit rarely visits, the Broadmoor. If you're moneyed, if you're wealthy, if you have prestige, that you want to live in the Broadmoor. A nice place. Yeah, it is. Louis Denoya's residence is a well-to-do townhouse, a large home for a single man. You want to stay here with him? That's fine. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Police, we're coming in! Check upstairs? Yeah, got it. And this was well kept, well furnished. It didn't look like a, a, there had been a robbery or any kind of crime committed there. We clear the place, which doesn't take more than a few seconds. We check all the rooms. No one is present. Upstairs is clear. Clear downstairs. It's got blood. Yeah. Kenda spots a trail of blood leading into the garage. The first person that police see is an African-American man, naked, lying on the floor of the garage. He's been dead for a couple of days. Why is a dead man naked on the garage floor? The male at the rear of the car is dead from six gunshot wounds of the chest. Fairly large caliber, nine millimeter or larger. I would say, just looking at the stippling and tattooing, the burning of the flesh where the bullets enter the body, the range is somewhere around 18 inches. 
The victim has neither clothes nor wallet, nothing to identify him. Just a few feet from the deceased, the vehicle's trunk is open, and in the front seat. Let's see your hands now. There's a driver behind the wheel, well-dressed, appears to be in his late 40s, with an impeccable haircut, not a hair out of place. Kenda takes a closer look. The driver is dead. Look at this. It's inscribed. I turn a bracelet on his wrist, and it has his name, Louis Denoyo. So this is undoubtedly our note author. And I find a 38 caliber two-inch revolver, and that is obviously our murder weapon. Louis Denoya's body has no wounds or bruises, but Kenda notices something about the color of his skin. Our man's body is cherry pink and apple blossom white. The common discoloration of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide will replace oxygen in the bloodstream 900 times faster than oxygen will enter the bloodstream. There is a glass on the dash containing liquid that looks like alcohol, has a color of scotch. Kenda steps back to survey the scene. So the presentation of the scene is interesting. We have a naked male, multiple gunshot wounds, been dead a couple days, laying at the rear of a car. We have another male who is fully dressed, seated behind the wheel and dead from carbon monoxide poisoning. There is a rhythm to these events. I just don't know what it is. It is odd, that's for certain, but we now have to reconstruct this chain of events. The crime lab comes in and starts their investigation. They're dusting for fingerprints and trying to find any evidence they can. A CSI gets to work. Kenda follows the trail of blood back inside. They've noticed that there was blood stains on the bed. Bed covers had been removed and were on the floor. They were blood stained. Check for an ID? Sure. Staff ID contains ID, contains employment history of being a cook at a local business, and identifies him as Leonard Watson, age 37. But why was Leonard Watson shot in Louis DeNoya's house? 